Hello everyone, this is Christian Melodic Sound Interactive and we are going to pick up where we left off in the last video. Last video was uh, finishing up dealing with creating the uh, another image tag helper. In this case we're going to create a picture tag helper. So to round out our image related tag helpers. It's a little bit more involved than the previous one. We'll have to add another attribute and do some more work to figure out the media queries and so on and so forth. But we'll, we'll take care of it in this video. In addition to that we're going to add a little bit more functionality to all of our image related tag helpers by allowing us to specify a class ID and any sort of um, you know attributes that we might want to add like maybe data dash attribute or something like that but we're going to add that to the base class so that we get that functionality in all of our tag helpers all at once. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do, of course, is the previous uh, two cases were both creating image tags and we inherited from a base class to, to make things easier. We're going to inherit again from that base class, but we need to make a little bit of a change here, right? Because our um, sort of parent element, uh, the root element is a picture tag instead of an image at this time. So what we'll do is come back to our image tag helper, the base class, and we're going to say that uh, if the context dot tag name is not equal to not equal to picture then we will do this stuff here All right so that's uh, setting the output name adding the alt to it adding the class so let's save that so if we're done there we can go back to our file we've already created the uh, picture tag helper here and do a little bit of uh, importing. I'm not going to type this. Let me put this over here. So basically, we are uh, sometimes, sometimes. So what we're doing is we're going to set the name for these to be just picture. The element is going to be a picture, and we need the attributes that are already specified in the base class. But we also need this uh, breakpoints attribute that we're going to have. So speaking of which, let's create a property for it. So we'll have our attributes. I don't know why. And we need to inherit. So image tag helper. And let's implement our abstract. Perfect. All right. So easy stuff out of the way here. So output uh, tag uh, name. Whoa picture output dot tag mode is equal to tag mode dot start tag and end tag. Now we have to do a little bit more work than the previous one. So let's do this. Var breakpoints equals breakpoints dot split. So our, com our spray points are going to be the same as the sizes before it, which was a comma separated string. Now we're going to use a little bit of link here. We're going to parse, in, parse that and to array the result. So let's import link here. So now we have a, an array of integers. And we're going to need to iterate over those. So r i equals 0. I less than breakpoints dot length I plus plus. All right, so in our picture tab or picture yeah picture uh, elements we have one or more sources, and the number of breakpoints are going to determine how many source tags we have in here. That's why we have it inside this for loop. So let's do this. For source is equal to new tag builder and it's going to be a source let's do some importing all right so now we'll do a little bit so if i is equal to zero so the first one then we'll do else if so the uh, i is equal to uh, 
what I call it, breakpoints dot length. And to do that means I missed uh, something in the if. What I wanted to do is go to length plus one. Last up, get an else. All right, so let's do some work inside of these. I don't know why my tab. Oh, <laughs> maybe that is four spaces. Is that four spaces? One, two. No? Well, maybe zoomed in, it's four spaces, but it's not. All right, so what we want to do is if it's the first image, all we're going to do is set the max width. So let's say max is equal to breakpoints and I, so I guess zero. So we get, in this case, we would have a breakpoint at 1200. I don't know if you can see it very well. It'd be a breakpoint at 12. We'll specify a breakpoint at 1200. The max will then would be 1199. Same deal up here. So now we just say source dot attributes dot add and media. And what we add, we'll use a template string here, max dash width. And we'll put in max and pixels. Great. So now, sort of the opposite case is if this is the last one. So the last one just needs a min. And then so it's going to be breakpoints i minus one. And from there, we just do source.attributes.add media table string min width. min pixels done so now the case in which we're in the in betweens so var min that's going to be breakpoints and that one's i minus one so back up one and then this one the max var max it's going to equal to breakpoints whichever one we're at but minus one. All right, and now we can add um, source.attributes.add, again, media. Guess through all of this, we could have just said, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Never mind. So a template string, what we need here is, and now when I'm thinking about it, I've missed, uh, parentheses on these. These should have all been wrapped in parentheses. And what we're going to need is two and this one we put an and next between them. All right, so inside of this one min width min pixels max width Max pixels. Great. All right. We've done all of that. Now the source tag, we need to either put in a uh, source set or data dash source set, depending on whether we're lazy loading them or not. So source.attributes. Dot add. And we have our is lazy loaded. That's true, data dash source set. Else source set. And so we need to tell it what the source is. Forgot to turn off my notifications. So image source. I strings I. Does that look good? Everything looks okay there. So now we do output dot content dot append HTML and we append the source tag to it. Alright, so that'll create all of our source tags. 
what we then need to do is to create the one uh, image tag. Right? So var image equals new tag builder image. And we do image equal oh, image equals attributes dot add. Add and alt, comma, alt. Perfect. Now we'll say so if is lazy loaded. Two things in there, right? We need image dot attributes dot add. And we need to have I realize now that I was doing this a bit different than the previous one. So let's just steal previous stuff. So let's go back here and here. So this is us setting the source set or the source attribute. So let's grab that, come back over here. Is lazy loaded, data dash source. And the last thing that we needed Pausing for one second, so I don't, we do not need this, the source set, but we do want to add one more thing, which is, uh, I don't know why. So last thing, image dot add CSS class, lazy load. So that gives us If I think that should be good, and I guess the last thing that we need to do is output uh, content dot append HTML again. Image. I'm feeling something not quite right. We get rid of the source set stuff going on here. Sneaking suspicion that something's not right, but we're going to find out here real soon. So let's come in here to our uh, Razor page. And we're just going to copy this thing in. So here we are. Source fragment, picture tag with sizes, breakpoints, extension, lazy loads, false. And let's scroll down here and do our lazy loaded version. Basically all the same content except for the lazy equals false. Let's save that. Go to our browser here. Second to restart and let's just refresh. Come in here and let's see. Here's our picture. So picture being shown so that's a good thing. So we have our picture tag. We have our media so max width 479 min 487.79 and max 800. Seems like things are working. So we are at 495 at the moment. So if we look, we downloaded the 641 automatically. There's the 480. There's the 800. So at least that part seems to be working. Go to lazy load. We're at 377. So that's giving us the 400, and I've already forgotten what we specify. 480, 640, and 800. Notifications going off all over the place. So we have the 480 right now. There's our 640. There's the 800. Just to be sure, if we scroll down, let's refresh. Scroll down, see a whole bunch of 480s popping up. So that seems to all be working correctly. So I guess there wasn't anything wrong <laughs> until I find it and have to make a follow-up video to correct things. But before we finish everything for this video, what we're going to do is add just a little bit more functionality, and that's going to be to all of our tags. So right now we can go ahead and close the picture because we're going to return to the, the base class here. So I want to add a few things, a few capabilities here. What we're going to do is 
be able to specify some attributes on our tag. We're going, which is going to be an, an object here. We're going to be able to specify the a class to add to it and an ID. Perfect. So before we get started here, we're going to need a few things. I like to make them as extension methods. So I've added some extension methods. They usually go to different spots, but as usual, to make things easier on me, we're going to create them down here. So one thing that we're going to need, and this is basically done all through uh, ASP.MVC, and that's to take a um, dictionary. A dictionary is going to be string string, or to create a dictionary, I should say. And we'll put to dictionary. We're going to take in an object. So we'll take in basically an anonymous object and spit out a dictionary, string string dictionary. So if object equals null, return new dictionary of nothing. Otherwise, return and let's do some link here. X in object. So we have the object, we get the type, then we get the properties and select select yep, select X. Now we can do two dictionary. Do some importing. I thought link was already in here. Obviously not. And let's just put our semicolon to start with. So what we want to do is dictionary this stuff. So the key for us is just going to be the name of the property and then the value x dot get method get get method. There we go. Too many gets dot invoke and object null. So if that does not exist, what we'll do is return nothing. Otherwise, start get get method dot invoke object null dot to string. Perfect. All right, and uh, the next and final stat extension method once public static string Pascal to kebab case. So, so we'll say that if string dot is null empty or white space, then we would just return the value. Missing something? Oh, <laughs> helps if you tell it what string to check. All right, and the last one that we want is to return. We'll use a regex for it. Replace value. Obviously, I'm not going to type this thing out. I mentioned in previous videos, I am not a regex person, so this I'm sure is fairly simple for a lot of people, but on me and so we want to do some replacing regex options dot compiled now we'll do dot trim and dot to lower let's do an import here so that should take care of the functions that we were the methods we needed. So let's return back up to process. We're going to add it in up here. So we'll say if string dot is null empty or white space class if that's not true then I want output dot add class. I think I did a different add class in the other one. 
add class class HTML coder dot default. So we've now added a class. Same rigmarole string dot is null empty or white space ID. If that's false, then output dot attributes dot add an ID of ID. Perfect. Last but not least, so if attributes so not equal to null, let's do some stuff. So we'll say attributes is equal to attributes dot to dictionary. So now we can do for each key value pair in attributes. We'll have uh, output dot attributes dot add key value pair we want the key and then uh, well key dot pascal to kebab case and key oh nope not key kvp value save server coming back no errors let's check things out so the only thing I did to check things out here was just to go to our first case, this responsive images case. Let's come back in here. It's this bad boy right here. We'll take a look at the image tag here. So let's go back in. And add some stuff to it. So I want to say class equals class. ID equals ID. And the last one here, attributes, and that's equal to, and I feel like I should have had a quotation mark there, or double quotes. We'll see. And no, I don't need that. Whoops. Might not need those. So new, and we want this to be an object. We'll do some name equals some dash name for the value. There we go. Save that. And we refresh. So maybe hard to see in the video. I think I've made this as big as I can. Um, so I now have an ID equals ID, class name equal or class equals class. And we have this thing, although I wrote it in the uh, uh, camel case, we have it now in kebab case, some name equals some name. So now that's basically like a data dash attribute, data dash whatever, right? Uh, so that takes care of it. So what we've done now is uh, previous two videos, we made the image tags. And then this one, we've taken care of adding in the picture tag. And that took us a little bit more work to deal with the breakpoints and the media queries and such. So we finished those. We've also added, by adding it to the base class, the ability to add a class, ID, and attributes to all of our um, image tag helpers. And I think at least until I, you know, maybe if I come up with something else to talk about in terms of these images, that gives us a good, good start on having to do with everything. And then uh, I'm going to have to figure out what we do in the next video. But of course, um, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button, as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.